Hello, my name is Martin Rapp. I'm a PhD student at Karlsruhe Institute of Technology in Germany. Our work, Distril, Distributed Resource-Aware Learning in Heterogeneous Systems, is a collaboration between Karlsruhe Institute of Technology and Huawei Research Center Munich. Federated Learning performs distributed training of a neural network model on many devices, where each device holds local private training data. In addition to the devices, the Federated Learning System comprises also a server that enables cooperative learning among all devices. Synchronous federated learning operates in so-called rounds, where at the beginning of each round, the server distributes the current model, more specifically the parameters to all devices. Then, each device performs local training with its own local data. After training, each device reports back to the server an updated model with parameter changes. The server aggregates all received updates by a weighted averaging and starts the next round. This is repeated until convergence. The weight aggregation by the server enables knowledge exchange for cooperative learning. Federated learning gained popularity because it maintains privacy of the device's data by keeping the raw data always on the devices. In addition, exchanging only the model parameters may reduce the communication volume compared to exchanging the raw training data. Finally, federated learning still enables to train a single model from all data on all devices, which enables to train a model with high accuracy. Training of a neural network is a resource-hungry task. It is unrealistic to assume that all devices have the same computational resources for training. In particular, there is heterogeneity between devices, for instance, because different devices have different hardware, which happens if different generations of devices cooperate, or if some of the devices have a neural network accelerator, or if different devices have different power budgets. This leads to a different per-device training throughput. This problem of static heterogeneity has already been studied in the literature, and we will see some techniques later. However, more importantly, there is also heterogeneity over time, which means that even the training throughput of a given device varies throughout the time. For instance, this is the case when the training task needs to compete for computational resources, like CPU time, with other tasks running on the system. The time scale in which such shared resource contention happens is in the order of seconds. This is much faster than federated learning round times, which are usually in the order of minutes or sometimes even hours. While static heterogeneity over devices has been studied already, dynamic heterogeneity over time has been neglected so far. At the same time, we observe currently a trend towards distributed learning on deep edge devices. For instance, the European Union Horizon Europe call for proposals, as well as the 5G Infrastructure Association and the Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda reports detail such a vision. This is illustrated further in the following motivational example on real-time video analytics. Consider an edge device that processes images from several cameras. The edge device performs real-time inference on the video streams to predict certain events, but also performs time-delayed training to further improve the predictions. The training is organized as a federated learning system among many distributed edge devices. Inference and training run in parallel and therefore compete for the same underlying computational resources, most prominently the CPU time. The real-time inference has a higher priority, but its workload varies, for instance, because inference may be skipped if the input video has barely changed. These workload changes happen fast and at any time, as the input video may change fast, which means in the order of seconds. In contrast, federated learning rounds take several minutes or even hours. The available resources are also not known in advance, as they depend on the input video. In summary, the available CPU time for training varies over time and changes fast and at unpredictable times. But what is the problem with time-varying heterogeneous resource availability? Federated learning usually operates in synchronous rounds. While there are approaches that employ asynchronous coordination, they tend to suffer from instabilities in the learning. In synchronous federated learning, devices have to upload their update in time, which means before the round ends. If the local training on a device takes too long and the device uploads its update too late, the server has already started the next round and the update needs to be discarded, wasting the spent computational resources. On the other hand, a device that finishes training too early needs to wait until the next round begins until it can resume training. 
It is idle during this time, which also wastes available resources. Our goal is to maximize the conversion speed. To achieve this, we need to tackle two challenges. First, we need to avoid wasting resources, which means we need to fully exploit the time-varying available resources on each device. This has two implications. We need fine-grained adjustability of the resources used during training to match the available resources as close as possible, and we need to be able to dynamically and fast adjust the resources to be able to react to sudden changes in the resource level. The second challenge is to efficiently use the available resources. This means to perform the most useful computations with respect to the goal. In other words, we want to improve the model as fast as possible with the limited available resources. An often seen pattern to tackle heterogeneous computational resource availability in federated learning is to let weak devices train only a subset of the full neural network, reducing computations. The size of the subset is selected according to the available resources on the device. The subset can either be selected deterministically or randomly. A state-of-the-art technique in the first category is heterofl, which scales layer by a factor of r. In the case of convolutional layers, this means removing a number of filters from each layer before sending it to the devices for local training. The filters are always removed from the end, which means removed in order. In contrast, Federated Dropout randomly selects filters to drop from each layer before sending only the remaining filters to the devices. These works, while aiming at heterogeneity between devices, do not tackle the two previously mentioned challenges with dynamic resource availability. In particular, both works select the subsets at the server at the beginning of the round. This does not allow to react to changes during the round, preventing to fully exploit the available resources. In addition, HeteroFL only supports few discrete resource levels, which prevents it from closely matching the available resources. In contrast, Federated Dropout achieves a fine-grained adjustability via changing the continuous dropout rate. Finally, both works apply the same scaling factor to all layers. As we will see later, this is suboptimal and greatly reduces the efficiency in terms of achievable convergence speed. To summarize, we have seen that time-varying heterogeneous resource availability is a relevant problem that will be aggravated by current trends towards deep edge learning. At the same time, this problem has not yet been solved. To this end, we present Distril, the first technique for time-varying resource availability in federated learning. We employ structured dropout on the devices, where in each mini-batch of local training, a random subset of the neural network is dropped. Dropout allows for a fine-grained trade-off between computational resource requirements and the convergence speed. We adjust the resource requirements to the available resources locally on each device by tuning the dropout rates. Thereby, no assistance from the server is required, which first maintains scalability by avoiding that the server needs to keep track of the resources on each device, minimizing signaling overhead. And second, it enables fast adaptability to changes. These two contributions tackle the first challenge, in other words, enable us to fully exploit all dynamic available resources. Finally, we show that using a different dropout rate per each layer achieves a much better trade-off between computational resource requirements and the convergence speed. We present an offline design space exploration to automatically find Pareto optimal per layer dropout vectors. This enables us to tackle the second challenge, in other words, most efficiently use the available resources. The mechanism to adapt the computations of training is filter-based structured dropout, which randomly drops parts of the neural network at each mini batch. In contrast to regular dropout, which is commonly used for regularization, structured dropout drops contiguous parts of the network, in our case, whole filters. This maintains regularity in the computations required for efficient computation methods like vectorization. The benefit of dropping parts of the network in this case is not regularization, but reducing the required computations. The graph shows for various ratios of dropped filters how the number of computations, measured in the number of multiply accumulate operations, max, and the mini-batch training time on a Raspberry Pi 4, which serves as an example for an edge device, is affected. 
This example uses the DenseNet40 image classification network. As can be seen, the number of MACs can be reduced by up to 74% and the training time by over 50%. The difference between the two comes from our implementation in PyTorch that could not change the PyTorch backend and therefore could not avoid some parameter copies during training. The resource level is adjustable in a very fine-grained manner by tuning the per-layer dropout rates. Adjusting the dropout rates has virtually zero overhead as it does not require any repacking of the neural network. In addition, the time granularity at which this can be done is mini-batches, which is very fast. The drawback of structured dropout is a reduced conversion speed as only a part of the parameters are being updated in each mini-batch and some regularization noise is injected into the training. Therefore, it is crucial to select the per-layer dropout rates such that the reductions in conversion speed are minimized. It is, however, challenging to find these parito-optimal dropout rates. Different layers in a neural network have different computational effort, which affects the effectiveness of dropout to reduce the computations. For instance, the layers in DenseNet image classification networks, which is one of the topologies studied in this work, alternate between computationally lightweight and heavy, depending on whether they are at the beginning or at end of a dense block. In addition, the impact on the accuracy from reducing the width differs between layers. As mentioned earlier, efficiently using the available resources requires finding the Pareto optimal dropout rates, which means the dropout rates that maximize the conversion speed for a given resource level. As each dropout rate per each layer can be tuned independently, this opens a huge design space. Manually exploring this space is not possible. Automatic design space exploration is required instead. Our solution is based on the evolutionary algorithm NSGA2. NSGA2 requires to define a fitness function to assess a candidate dropout vector. Our fitness function is two-dimensional. The first dimension quantifies the resource requirements when training with the candidate dropout vector. This can be computed analytically by calculating the expected number of max. The second dimension is the convergence speed, which is less straightforward to quantify. We measure the convergence speed by observing the accuracy change of short training with the candidate dropout vector. This requires access to a small amount of training data. However, we perform only very short training, which requires little data similar to the amount of data of only a few devices. Therefore, this is consistent with the fundamental assumptions in federated learning that data is private to the devices. The figure visualizes the optimization process. The orange triangles show the trade-off between computational resource requirements and conversion speed achieved by using the same dropout rate for all layers, similar to how the state-of-the-art techniques work. The blue circles depict the current Pareto front found by our DSE. The initial population comprises random dropout vectors. They tend to have similar resource requirements and fail to cover the whole Pareto front. After already few generations, our DSE begins to cover the whole range. The Perleo dropout rates are further refined in the next generations. The final Perito front finds a much better trade-off than using the same dropout rate for all layers. It is important to notice that the DSE is performed only once offline by the server and not by the resource-constrained devices themselves. This drill is divided in two parts. We have already seen the DSE, which is performed offline, and determines the Pareto optimal per layer dropout rates for a given neural network topology. Its result is stored in a lookup table and deployed to the devices for runtime use. Each device periodically adjusts the dropout rates used during training to the available resources by looking up appropriate dropout vectors in the table. This happens at the granularity of mini batches and without any assistance from the server. At the end of a round, devices upload also the total number of spent resources during the training, in addition to the parameter updates. The server uses this information to perform weighted averaging, giving a larger importance to updates from devices that were able to use more resources for training. We evaluate our technique in simulation. The following slides show results with the CIFAR-10 dataset and DenseNet-40 image classification network. Results with other datasets and networks are presented in our paper. We use 100 devices with CIFAR-10, where 10 devices are active in each round. We study two main scenarios. The first scenario considers static heterogeneity among devices. 
Thereby, each device has a randomly selected but constant resource availability level. The second scenario is our main scenario. It additionally considers heterogeneity over time, where the resource availability changes at random times, which are sampled from a Poisson distribution to model the occurrence of random events. This graph shows the convergence during the training in the first scenario. We have repeated each experiment with three random seeds and report here only the average accuracy values. As we show in our paper, the standard deviation is small and plays a minor role. We compare our technique to four other techniques. The first baseline assumes full resource availability on all devices, which allows each device to always train the full network. This is unrealistic and serves as an upper bound. The second baseline operates on a statically reduced network, in this case a smaller dense net configuration, which is small enough to be trained by even the weakest device. As can be seen, it initially converges a bit faster than this drill, but its accuracy falls behind soon. We then compare this drill to the two state-of-the-art solutions discussed earlier, hetero FL and federated dropout. Both techniques achieve a much slower convergence than this drill. The reason is that Hetero-FL cannot fully exploit the available resources, because it only supports few discrete resource levels. Both Hetero-FL and Federated Dropout reduce all layers by the same factor, which further prevents them from efficiently using the resources. In summary, this drill achieves the fastest convergence among all techniques, almost reaching the upper bound. The graph on the right shows the accuracy after 7500 rounds of training, when all techniques have fully converged. This drill also reaches the highest final accuracy. We finally study our main use case of time-varying resource availability. As mentioned earlier, we model random events that cause a change in the resource availability level. The times when this happens are sampled from a Poisson distribution. The rate parameter lambda determines the average number of resource changes per each round. The following plots omit the two simple baselines that assume full resource availability or use a statically reduced network, because these techniques do not depend on any heterogeneity and would perform exactly the same as shown in the last slide. We start with a relatively low rate of change, where resources change only in every second round. The results are similar to the previous scenario. When we increase the rate parameter lambda to one change per round on average, we observe that the accuracy of all techniques reduces slightly. Further increasing lambda reveals that the accuracy with Hetero-FL and Federated Dropout drops further, while the accuracy with this drill does not change significantly, even at a fast rate of 4 changes per round. The reason for the drop in accuracy with Hetero-FL and Federated Dropout is that both techniques select the trained dataset per device on the server at the beginning of a round. Therefore, they cannot react to changes during a round. If resources increase during a round, Devices finish training too early, resulting in idle times, which wastes resources. More severely, however, a drop in the resource availability level results in devices not finishing their training on time, they become stragglers, whose parameter updates are dropped by the server. The available resources of such a device in this round have been wasted completely. In contrast, devices that use this drill continuously adjust the computations for training to the available resources. This not only enables the fastest convergence with this drill, but also robustness to changes. Similar to the previous scenario, this drill also achieves the highest final accuracy. In conclusion, we introduced the problem of time-varying computational resource availability, which has been neglected so far, despite its growing importance, especially with the current observable trend towards learning on deep edge devices. We presented our solution Distril, which enables to fully and efficiently exploit the available resources. Distril uses structured dropout to dynamically reduce the computations. We showed that only different per layer dropout rates are Pareto optimal and are therefore required for efficient training. The Pareto optimal dropout rates are determined with an automated design space exploration technique based on an evolutionary algorithm. At runtime, each device adjusts the dropout rates locally without assistance from the server to react to changes in the resource availability level. Our evaluation showed that this drill achieves a much faster convergence than the state of the art, especially with fast changing resources without compromising on the final accuracy.